During the quarter two Tesla call, Elon mentioned that the majority of the calls for service to the service departments are about how to use autopilot or referencing autopilot. Was loop on with, with, with service and production and with the software team. Um, and, and for example, like a lot, a lot of service uh, visits are just questions about how to use the car. And, uh, and, and it's just, the number one visit. Yeah. And the number one visit is uh, uh, how to use autopilot. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, a bit of uh, uh, education there helps. Yeah. Like literally, how do I turn it on? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's sort of like, how do I turn it on? Yeah. Okay. So, so just, just providing better feedback on user interface and literally how do you turn it on? Um, and, uh, yeah. A whole bunch of things that are quite elementary to reduce service load. So are you one of those folks that are not sure how to use and set up autopilot and are calling Tesla to figure out how to? If so, today's your lucky day because I'm going to break down autopilot, go through all the features and how to set them up. And then we're going to go on the road to show you exactly how to turn it on and how to use it while you're driving. Let's go. So the first thing to do is come in here, get into the main menu by pressing the vehicle, and here it will bring up all of the options and settings for your car. From here, you're going to select Autopilot, and this will bring up all of the features as it relates to Autopilot. Now, there are some features that we're not going to get into here today because we are specifically just talking about Autopilot. We are not going to talk about Navigate on Autopilot. So we're going to want to come in here and you're going to find all of the settings relating to autopilot. So the first option allows you to change the following distance of your vehicle to the vehicle in front of you. You can select this from as little as one car length all the way up to seven car lengths. And this is how far your car will be traveling back from the vehicle in front of it, just as it's depicted here. This could be changed at any time based on your driving habits. I like to have mine set at two. And here in autopilot, you're also able to check um, how you want to be warned about your speed limit. So if we set the display um, relative or absolute, you can uh, give it an offset. So let's say I want to be warned when I'm traveling six miles an hour over the speed limit, or you can just say, hey, it's absolute. When I'm going 50, when the speed limit is 50, I want to be going 50. So you can have it do either one of these. Um, I always turn mine off because I do. <laughs> um, and here is really, really an, an important safety uh, feature to autopilot, which lets you choose how you want to be warned as it relates to forward collision warning. Now you can turn it off where you do not want to be warned at all, or you can say, nope, I want to be warned at the very, very last second, which I don't recommend, medium or early. I find that medium works really, really well and gives me plenty enough warning that, hey, somebody just slammed on the brakes in front of you. Um, autopilot will, of course, adjust, but you will have the opportunity to uh, slam on the brakes or step on the brakes should you need to. Um, now, these lane departure avoidance uh, features are really safety settings for the Tesla Model 3 and don't necessarily pertain to autopilot themselves. The standard lane departure avoidance and emergency lane departure avoidance do work outside of autopilot. So they're really not a function of autopilot. For whatever reason, they dumped them into this menu. Um, I did do a video specifically outlining these features, which I will post up here for you to review. I think it was a really good uh, video on these features because they were just um, delivered to the vehicle uh, earlier this year. But uh, some really, really cool features that um, I think you should get some more in-depth knowledge of if you don't know about them already. So really, as it relates to autopilot, that's about it. You get to choose your, your, um, your follow distance, you can choose your speed limit warnings, and your forward collision warnings. Again, the lane departure avoidance is something that is works outside of autopilot, so I don't really want to include that in this video since we are specifically talking autopilot. So really, folks, that's about it. 
as it relates to the settings for autopilot. Um, now we're going to jump in the car and we're going to take a ride. I'm going to show you how to activate autopilot, what it's doing on the screen, what it's seeing, what it's showing, and some of the other adjustments and features that you can change while you're driving in autopilot. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the items in the setup menu, now it is time to show you how to activate and how to use autopilot. So there's a couple different ways that you can activate autopilot while you're driving. The way that I like to do it is activate traffic aware cruise control first by pushing down on the drive stock one time. This gets your speed set and allows you to Make sure that you're in a position to go ahead and activate autopilot. Once you are in traffic aware cruise control, simply push down on the drive stock twice. You now see that the steering wheel is highlighted blue in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And you notice my travel lines are now blue indicating the lane that I am in. One thing to note, autopilot will only work when you see the grayed out steering wheel in the top left corner, usually above 30 miles per hour. At this point in time, I have my speedometer set at 70 miles per hour and I am on autopilot. So the car is automatically going to uh, speed up and slow down based on the traffic that's in front of me. And now I can simply kick back, relax, and let the car do the driving. The vehicle's always looking for your interaction, so it wants to see or feel that you are still in control of the vehicle. If you notice, when I did initiate autopilot, a message came up and said, please make sure your hands are on the wheel at all times. What I like to do is I just like to rest my arm on the armrest and just sort of hold the steering wheel here. It's actually really comfortable. You're gonna to have to figure out what's most comfortable for you. But this always lets the car know that I'm actually in control or still engaged in driving the vehicle. There are a couple other features that I'd like to go over while you are driving um, on autopilot. And one of those features are increasing and decreasing your speed. So you have a plus, plus and a minus alongside of your speedometer here. And you can simply adjust by pressing the plus or minus. That's sort of cumbersome because you, you know, as the car moves, your finger's gonna be moving about and you may not be able to get to press that button. So the easiest thing to do is come over to your scroll wheel and simply click up once to increase your speed and simply click down to decrease your speed. If you want to adjust in more increments than one mile per hour, you simply flick the scroll wheel up. It increases the speed by five miles per hour. Flick the control wheel down and your speed is decreased by five miles per hour. So it's a very, very cool, easy feature, allows you to interact with autopilot without actually having to go into the screen and try to touch or find how to change the speed. Another cool feature is to be able to change your following distance. And I showed you earlier on in the setup menu on where you can set your following distance, but it's dynamic. You can actually change it while you're driving. And to do so, you simply click to the right to decrease your following distance and click to the left to increase your following distance. You can follow from seven cars down to a single car. I like to keep mine at two, just to feel safe for me. The car does a really good job of keeping the distance for the car from the car in front of you. Now you're driving autopilot and you're not quite sure how to disengage. There really are three simple ways to disengage autopilot and one of those is to simply just grab the wheel slightly and this automatically turns off autopilot but still keeps traffic aware cruise control enabled and you're still being able to maintain your speed. So if there's something in the road you don't have to worry about autopilot having to recognize it, you can still take control of your vehicle at any given time. So let's reactivate autopilot by clicking down twice. Please keep your hands on the wheel and I have my blue sign. 
The other way to deactivate autopilot is to step on the brakes. Now, once you step on the brakes, it actually deactivates autopilot and traffic aware cruise control. Pretty standard. Another way to deactivate autopilot is just to push up on the drive stock. And you can see that it deactivated autopilot and traffic aware cruise control. I have my hands off the wheel. Autopilot is actually taking this turn for me and doing a very, very good job. It is still picking up all the traffic in and around the vehicle. Very tight turn that it's taking here. I still have my hands on the wheel, but it's doing a very good job. And you can actually see, well, maybe you can't, but the steering wheel in the display is actually turning along with the vehicle. The car is very, very interactive while driving in autopilot. It will still alert you if a car slams on the brake in front of you. It'll alert you if you're trying to get over and somebody is on the side of you. And one of the other features is how to lane change while you are in autopilot. Now, please keep in mind, this is not navigate on autopilot that I'm showing here today. This is just autopilot. So the car will not change lanes automatically while in autopilot. So in order to change lanes while in autopilot, check your blind spot. Hold down your turn signal and the car will change lanes. Now you can see the lane change from a solid blue line to a dotted blue line indicating that you are changing your lane. Very intuitive display indicating that the vehicle is changing lanes. There's one other thing that I did want to show you and that is while you're driving, if the car doesn't sense you on the steering wheel interacting with the vehicle, it's going to nag you and tell you that you need to do so. And you can see it says apply slight turning force to the steering wheel. And it is flashing blue up at the top of the screen notifying me. Now if I don't, you can see it's rapidly getting faster. And now it's beeping at me with red hands. Apply slight turning force to the steering wheel. And if this continues to happen, the notifications will get louder and more frequent. And now there you see, auto steer unavailable for the rest of my drive. So Tesla has done everything that they can to enhance the life safety system as it pertains to autopilot so that we don't fall asleep at the wheel and we can't go for a long stretch of road without interacting with the vehicle. It's a safety feature, I welcome it, I'm glad it's there. Autopilot is a very fun feature to use. It does take a lot of stress out of driving in traffic and just makes road trips that much more fun and easy to drive. The other cool thing I'd like to show, and this is just not necessarily in autopilot, this works in traffic aware cruise control. You can see that the speed limit um, the, on the road that I am on is 55 miles per hour. I have my vehicle set to 65 miles per hour. If you need to, for some reason, get down to that speed limit, all you do is have to simply tap the speed limit sign. The speed has been reduced and my car is slowing down to the designated speed limit. Another very cool feature on the Tesla Model 3. Okay, so that is how you autopilot in a Tesla Model 3. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I truly appreciate it. I hope the video was informative and provided some information that you can use to better understand how autopilot works and how to operate it. Thanks again for tuning in and please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe down below. Thank you so much, folks.